Okay, this is a really, really important activity if you're on the green level and especially if you've got a child who is struggling to hear the sounds or blend them or understand their order or do the link between the speech sounds and the sound picks. And what I mean is if I say the word sat and I ask them for the sounds, so I'm looking at this, just ignore this for a minute. Um, if I say the word sat, they need to be able to hear at. That's what I call duck hands, so they're just showing s, a, t. They need to be able to hear and identify those three sounds in the word sat. They need to know which is the first sound, s, which is the last sound, t, which is the middle sound, a. They need to be able to do that, really, before they start thinking about the representations of those speech sounds. I call them pictures of speech sounds. So that's just a picture of a speech sound. That's one of the pictures of the speech sound, s. So if we say s in one of our words and take a, speech, uh, take a picture with our speech sound camera, it might look like that. It might look like something else as well. There's actually eight different pictures for the speech sound s, but that's the first one that we learn. Um, so when children are in the green level and they're just doing s, at, p, i, n, sap, in, um, we're using these, not so much that we recognise that, so that the children go s, t, a, i, p, Mm, although we want them to do that really quickly. It's more that we're using these, like when we're teaching children about number. We use the numbers 1 to 10, really, to teach them about the concepts of bigger than, smaller than, you know, what happens if I add 2, what happens if I take. So all the concepts we're teaching just within those numbers. So that's why it's important to do green level and get the skills right before you move on. So if anybody is telling you to teach one a day or something like that, it's just ridiculous because, first of all, all children don't learn the same same way so you can't do something you can't teach phonics with the whole class it's just impossible except at the very beginning you very very quickly got to differentiate and what have you but the main thing is that if you're teaching one every day you're not really teaching what this represents and the skills that underline encoding which is spelling and decoding which is reading So one of the activities that's really, really important to help children understand that order, because we say sat, and even if we go s, at, like that, or you count them, what we need is for the brain to go left to right. It's like when we're reading, we read s, at, sat. We need the brain to go left to right. So this activity is going to help with this. And I had someone a minute ago who said, um, you know, they might, um, one of the children, they might listen for sat and, hit and say s at. But then when they blend s at, they say at because they've missed off one bit. So again, this is something that will help with that. So any struggling reader or any child who's not picking it up really quickly, please start doing this every day, just a couple of minutes every day, using the sound picks that they're learning. So all you need is a magnetic whiteboard. If you're going to use, um, you know, you can use magnetic letters, or uh, these are good ones because they look much more like the print that we see in, in, um, in our books. Or you can just get the cards out. These are ones that I use for read writing. But any cards that you make yourself, um, get some cards out, it doesn't matter, but they need to be the same height um, so that it's consistent. So just for this one, I'm going to use these, even though they're small. So we've got, these are our green level sound picks, sat pin. Okay. So what I want to do with the child, first of all, is say, right, we're going to think about playing the speech sound piano. And always check that they know that the speech sound piano starts on this side. So if you're a teacher and you're looking at children, make sure you do it that way around so that they're seeing it from left to right. So we're going to say, right, we're going to play the speech sound piano. Now let's play the word pin. So we're going to... Play the speech sound piano pin. It, mm, it's going to go along here. So what can we hear? We could do duck hands first. P, I, N. And just check, can they hear that there are those three? P, I, N. Okay, so we heard three. And it's really good if they can go P, I, N. As you do those, those lines. And do the numbers as well, because that just helps again with their ordering. So, but then being able to go P, I, Mm, is really important, even if they can't then blend it into pin. So, what we want the children to do, <clears throat> now you would actually hold it up in front of them. 
Okay, sorry about the light. But you're going to hold it up in front of them. Okay, so um, what you'll do, so imagine the person who's holding this is you. So that's you as the teacher. So here's the child, and we've just talked about the fact that it's s a t. So now we've got to take the pictures of the speech sounds. What would we need? Well, we know we need s and a t. So what I want them to do, sorry, hold on a second. So what I want them to do, first of all, is play speech sound piano. So they're going to go s a t. Okay, so they've played the speech sound piano. S at. So they're looking at the order as they're saying the sounds. Now what you're going to do is s and there it is. And then the teacher then is going to do a a t. <laughs> yes, it would help if the teacher knows the right sound. Thing. <laughs> Okay, so, hold it up straight again. So again, it's in front of them at their eye level. And again, when they're playing this, but can you try and hold it, hold it still for me? And then when they, well, you want them to play the speech sound piano again. S -a -t. So I hope you can see this time. Now, they've actually got the picture in front of them and their brain is going left to right. And they're going s -a -t. sat. Or they could do duck hands. D -a -t. <laughs> Sorry. S at sat but fingers are better because the fingers can go can you just stand in it thanks because fingers can go left to right s -a -t, and then play the whole thing we're playing the speech on piano s -a -t, and they're wiggling but they can also see those sounds that they're seeing them as sat and it helps when you've actually got the little one with i said they've got to be uniform so that you can see the word and you might even then put them close together if you just hold it still, then we just put, well, then let's make sat up here. Okay, hold it really still. So now we've got them. So then say, oh, so here it is. We don't need the lines now. Now we've got s. So we do a mini piano. S, a, t, sat. S, a, t, sat. But that playing the speech on piano really helps the brain. And it really helps with the ordering, the segmenting and the blending. What you can also do with the speech sound piano is the other way around. So whereas we were encoding then, so thinking about what the sounds are and making them, that's actually spelling, now we're going to do decoding. So we're going to say, right, let's play the speech sound piano, but tell me what you're playing. What the, What are the notes? P, I, N, pin, P, I, N, pin. So we're getting the, in the hang of, starting from the left, when we play it, we say it, play it, we say it, Play it, we say it, and then all together. Let's play the whole word. Pin. P -i -n, P-I-N. Pin. And then I could just give them a different one. Supposing I change this one. Say, oh, look, I'm going to change the put into a T. What's the new word now? T -i -n, T-I-N. Tin. Tin. Now, if the student is struggling when you're saying, um, you know, tin, to go t i Mm. The same as one-to-one -one counting, if they go one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, it means they're not understanding the concept. They have to be able to go tin, t, i, n, or tin, t, i, n. I like this because we're playing the speech sound piano and it's moving that way. Um, but they have to be able to do that. So please don't rush to this bit. I know this is the exciting bit because this looks like they're reading and spelling. But this is the bit that actually wires the brain for reading and spelling.